Hello guys, David Domenesi here. Well, I finally crashed the head of the tree mill doing this job with this cutter. I even snapped the cutter right there. It's time to take the mill apart. Now some of you may not be familiar with the tree mill it's not a bridge port, and it's not a bridge port clone. It's completely different. With some similarities, I'm sure. There's several belts. There's a variable speed belt. There is a couple of belts here in the gearbox, a timing belt, and a spindle feed belt. One of the belts runs this back pulley here for this mechanism which is the auto down feed or spindle feed so we have laid the mill down can you tell and our idea is to block it with two by fours we'll unbolt the motor we will lift up the knee slightly to take the weight of the motor and then we'll move the table this way to take the motor off. Only four bolts all the way around. This will pull off with a shaft that just comes out. So when we get it off, when we get the motor off, we got to get underneath here. And there's a, a plate under here that exposes the gearbox and a couple of more belts. We've already taken the oil out of the gearbox. We've already got this top cover off. There's a cover that goes on here, obviously. So there it is. And that just comes off right there. Now, buddy, I wish I could blame you for crashing the mill. Did you crash it or did I? You did. Can you believe it? What do you think about that? surprised you're not surprised thank you okay we've got it strapped down buddy is holding the motor we've taken off the bolts we've begun separating here our crack is a little smaller on the bottom than it is is on the top so I'm going to raise up the knee a little to make them about even that looks good Okay, there's the motor and this is a grease fitting here in order to have access to grease the variable speed pulley shaft. And here's the variable speed belt and the bottom pulley and that's where the shaft goes down in. So we're going to take this plate off, there's screws here. So we'll take this plate off and then we'll start monkeying with the plates up top. All right, we've gotten this off. There was a snap ring on there. This will be very difficult to put back on by yourself and put a snap ring. So if you push it and have help, you can get it back on. But don't think you're gonna do that on your own. Okay, there you go. And now we'll work on getting this off. There we are. It's a good time to clean it all up, lay that aside. Bring me that other pulley that we just took off. We took off the pulley that came out of this section here. That's it there. It just came right out. Okay, we'll get the belt off and work on getting this pulley off and then get the plate underneath off. All right, next we have to get this off. and There is a set screw here and here so you take that off or just loosen them and that pulls right out you can see on the back here and this is a grease fitting here and that's really loud sounding now this is a plate 
and it's got some bolts around it. We're going to take this plate out and that'll expose the gearbox underneath. It's nothing like having the, the sun in the machine shop with you. Looking good, buddy. Looks like he's using a crescent wrench on that Allen wrench to get some uh, Allen screws loosened that are too hard to get to with the Allen wrench. That's good thinking. It's good to see a boy get his hands dirty. He loves the machine shop. Do I hear an amen? Amen. There is a locator dowel pin here on the cover that has to be extracted with a punch from the other side before this cover will come off. And that's the hole right there. So punch that pin out and then we're just about ready for the cover to come out. The cover's off. That's it right there. There it is. The bearing was pressed in there. No big deal. Came off easy. There's a gasket. It's filthy. We'll get it cleaned. Be careful with this over here. This is the oil pump for the gearbox. Got a little spring in there. Gotta be careful with that. Stick that over here. And now, right here, you can see this belt material. And that was a cogged tooth belt. And the belt is completely gone. And all that's left is wires. Just wires. A little bit of the belt left over here. In order to dig all the old junk out, all the broken up belt pieces, I had to take the head off in order to get to the bearing cap at the bottom. So there is a bolt that goes through here and here with a nut on the side. You undo the nuts and the entire head pulls off of the spindle. And here's the gearbox assembly upside down. There's a bearing cap here. I have to take this pulley off in order to get these three screws out. Tree had a great idea having rollers here that are adjusted by eccentric pins on the side, but over time the rollers would beat up the spindle, so there was an option later on to upgrade to these flat rollers, if you will, and these hardened flat pieces now align the spindle up and down. And any bumps that are on the spindle that were caused by the rollers, these flat pieces just roll over any of those bumps. So we got to get this pulley off and there's a set screw here. This is a variable speed pulley on a spring. So we'll take this one off and the whole thing should pop off. And then we'll have access to this third socket head screw over here. We'll lift that off. And the spring. All right, we'll take this bearing cap off and we'll probably have to tap it from the other end. Get this moving. Okay, this is what we're trying to get out of here. The clutch shaft assembly. Tap that a little, see if that bearing cap will pop out and we can get the bearing out of the cap. All right, I got the bearing cap out. Had a tap on it and pry on it a little bit. And this bearing 
sounds terrible. And it's really loose. And this is what is left of that belt. So when I crash that cutter in, it might have kept going if this belt wasn't so old and deteriorated to begin with. Now I got the bearing cap loose on here and I figured out how to get this out but we need to get all this out of the way first. I already have. In this case it's an inch and five eighths socket. I had to grind off so it would fit inside here like that. Impact wrench is the way to go so that you don't have to back this up. Take the nut off. These pulleys are on keyways. Okay. And there's a oil cover under here. Now this is the spindle shaft. In order to get this out, there is a snap ring, an internal snap ring right down in there. You really can't get your pliers on, your snap ring pullers onto it unless you pull this bearing off. Now we need to work on getting this out. Remember we still have our belt under here. It was good to tap this up so the flat rollers are out of the way so I can set the head up in this direction now. So I gotta work on getting some things out of the way in here. There's some brass pieces. There's a, a finger yoke that sits in here on the clutch. That's part of your change, this lever over here, going from back gear to open pulley. So I gotta get that loose down in there. This bracket was in here. The screws are over here. That comes out, that helps hold that yoke. So now we're going to work on getting this out as an assembly. There's a bearing here, one in the middle and one on the bottom. Okay, here's that bearing cap. That's on the bottom. We saw that earlier. And the shaft fits here in this bearing. This bearing here is shot. We'll have to figure out how to get that out of there. Okay, in the end I drilled it. There's that part of the bearing we talked about before, right there. That's a number seven drill for a quarter 20 tap. So I'll punch that bearing out, we'll tap that, and we can plug it with a set screw. Okay, it came right out. That is just... Terrible, wobbly, and horrible. It's going to be nice to get that replaced. This is now freer to come out. So there's that finger yoke i got to get out of the way down here. And this should come out as one assembly. All right, there is the clutch assembly. Those fingers go right in here. And there's the part of the shaft that goes in the bearing cap. Okay. Now down in here, you can see the fingers. Here's the timing belt. Well, not the timing belt, but a timing belt. This is for your quill feed, power quill feed. Look at all those cracks in there. So that's just waiting to explode. That'll be hard to find, but there's a guy on eBay, Eagle Machine Tool that sells belts. This is a proprietary machine, uh, proprietary tree, tool, and die works belt. And that one goes in between these two cogged pulleys. And here's the fingers that slip into here. So there's a spring under there. There it is. And that goes under there like that. There's a lip here that fit in under this other pulley. This is the clutch assembly and what's interesting is that bad bearing we just took out goes on the bottom. 
and there's a bearing on the top here and it's just as bad. Listen to that scratchy. Okay, just use a wedge, in this case a screwdriver, tap on it around and around and around to give you some clearance here, and then put a puller on it and pull that off. Now this is one of the variable speed pulleys, it's got a bearing on it, and it's bad too. Put a block across here, piece of metal, because there's no room for the puller. Uh, there's nothing for the puller to sit on, and then just yank it off and put a new one on. And finally we have the bearing removal in here. We take the cap screws out. This is the back gear selector. That would be back gear and free spinning or open belt. So we take that out, this comes off, there's the bad bearing, and we'll wrap it out from this side, or press it out, no one will know that I'll be smacking it with the trusty brass hammer. If you don't tell, I won't. Okay, we got the bearing pulled off. And take this off, little sleeve off, that turns. Now I'm going to spin this, listen to that. Does that sound like a bad bearing? <laughs> so we got to, we got to press this bearing out. We'll just tap on it, pop it off. So I put the puller on, we'll pull that bearing off, take the snap ring out, and tap the rest of this assembly out. And there she is. I put the nut back on, and I'll use a block of wood on here and tap that down. That should work. Okay, we got everything out. We've got it in the parts cleaner. And we're going to take the long, tedious task of wiping out all this old grease and junk. What do you think about this, buddy? It's good. Okay. When it's all clean, come inside and get me. Okay. Okay, the parts washer is making the inside of this look a lot better. A lot of that grease is gone out of there. Other parts soaking right there. And then I have a galvanized tub here where I put the big parts. With some simple green or any kind of solvent like that. And I put an aquarium pump in there. That really makes short work of it. Here's part of the spindle that we took off. That's those square rollers on there. When you're done using your parts washer, you can run it through one of these Micron filter bags. This is an aquarium filter bag. I think that's 25 Micron. And you see all that grease that's being filtered out. Run that for an hour or two and your parts cleaner will be a lot cleaner. Ha ha. The parts are cleaning up nicely. And here's the, the head. It's a lot cleaner in there now. There is an oil level window on the side. 
I've been working on cleaning it. That fitting there just presses in. You can press it out, clean it, and press it back in. Or you can stick a tube through one of the holes in the back, brake parts cleaner, something like that. That's what I started till I ran out and it's coming, coming pretty clean. A few more applications and it'll be done. Might be a little hard to see. I've got a flashlight on it. There's the fitting that presses in. There's a hole on the bottom and a hole on the top. That's what you can put your tube in and spray. It's a glass window on the other side, not affected by brake parts cleaner. Now when you're done with your pile of parts, WD-40, to prevent flash rusting. Okay, there she is all cleaned up. Got some WD-40 in here to keep that from rusting while I'm waiting for parts. Okay. I'll show you the glass. That came out real nice too. That's here. Now we'll order bearings and belts and we'll put everything back together the way we took it apart. Okay, everything's back together and we're measuring run out up in the taper with a tenths indicator. Looks like one and a half to two ten thousandths.